Church, will you join me in welcoming the whole wide world to Burleson, Texas? This is the Open Door Experience. Boom. <laughs> Welcome, my friends. Welcome, everybody that's joining us all over the planet Earth. Man, I call y'all blessed. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Guys, today I'm getting into part two of Heart for the House. And Heart for the House is a sermon series about what church can be and who we think God has called us to be. And, and what's real is I'm really good at promoting what we do outside of the house. And I'm not very good at all at promoting what we do inside the house. And when I say promote it, I mean making a big deal out of what King Jesus is doing among us. And for that, I apologize, man. I apologize for that. And I'm, I've been convicted about it. And go, friends, we have something very special among us. We have something very special. We, we literally have people drive from all over the United States to come here. We, we're like, what are you talking about? We're talking about last week we had a family from Canton, Ohio, drove all the way from Ohio to be here. We had a, a family from uh, Michigan that drove all the way from Michigan to be here. We had a family from Port Aransas in South Texas they had to leave their house at 3 a.m. to be here at church on time. And I'm just like, wowzers, wowzers. I'm like, why? Because there's something special here. There's a way that God is moving among us that I want to make a really big deal out of. Now, last week, friends, we started talking about the importance of, there's lots of different models of church in the sense of, well, I'm just going to leave it at that. There's, there's certainly different biblical models and layers of revelation concerning church, but there's two main ones. One is the come and see, and the other is the go and tell. So if we, like the disciples who come to the tomb on the first Easter morning, and we say come and see that Jesus Christ is resurrected from the dead, then we have to have a model of ministry here among us that people can not only come and see, but they can effectively and they can consistently come and see the goodness of God. And then that takes some work. That takes some doing. And we're willing to do that work, and we're willing to do those kinds of things. And it's like, well, Pastor Troy, you know, I don't hear you talk very much about what we do here at Open Door. And you're right, man, I don't. I, I like talking about what we are doing as Open Door. Right? That's, that's what I love. I love that so much. And I, so the go and tell part is so much, is such a big part for us, but not at the expense of come and see. Not at the expense of that. Friends, we have to, we have to be the kind of, of body that when people come in here, they see, man, there's a different way to live. The word of God is real. Jesus Christ really is resurrected from the dead. That there is something that is different about us. It is the spirit of the living God that actually separates us. So it's like, okay, are you a come and see church or are you a go and tell church? It's kind of like your belly button. Are you an any or are you an outie, right? So it's like, all right, so if you, if you are somebody that if you're all about go and tell, What's real is if you don't have a good come and see, you don't have a good go and tell. Because if it doesn't happen here among us, it doesn't happen anywhere else. The Lord, the, the Lord gave the word, but great was the company who published it. Amen? You know, I want to just show you a video. This is Brother Johnny, Brother Johnny Lightning down in, down in Belize. And we're working with these girls that are so vulnerable. They're paraplegics. They live out in the Guatemalan jungle. And his whole ministry is to take care of 26 of these girls that are in the middle of nowhere. This is Miss Ida. Miss Ida is 19 years old. And up until a few months ago, we started visiting her. We found her. We started taking care of her. We took on the responsibility of making sure that she has a clean house and that she has clean clothes to wear and that somebody's not going to get in and haul her off into slavery. And his, you know what he does several times a week? He just gets with her, sets her up, puts that little girl in his lap and tells her she's beautiful and prays over her and reads the Bible to her. And that is as important of a ministry as any other ministry we have. Yes, you know what, man? We are indeed saving girls out of sexual trafficking all over the world. We are feeding, you know, we have fed over 500,000 people in the past five years. We've done 80 missions trips in 24, di in, in 24 different nations in five years. Yes, yes, yes. But I want to tell you, that one ministry of that one little girl is just as important as anything else. And if we are not the kind of people that we believe that and we demonstrate that and we live that kind of life, that does not happen. And I totally understand that and I believe that. So when it comes to the come and see, we have to create models where people can actually come and see. So... 
when we talk about the weekend services, okay, how we proclaim him, the weekend services, all right, so we, you and I, at this point, we have three Sunday morning services, and whenever we do this, what are we trying to do? Well, Ephesians chapter 3.10 says, his intent was that through the church, the manifold wisdom of God should be made known. The different layers of the manifest presence, the manifold wisdom of God, that there is a wisdom that you can operate in concerning concerning your emotional intelligence, concerning your family. And by the way, you're going to need extreme emotional intelligence when it comes to your family. Somebody say amen to that. And when it comes to your finances, when it comes to your marriage, when it comes to your walk with God, when it comes to who you are, that there is a wisdom that God Almighty has for you, but it begins with revelation, and then you have to apply your life to it so that you can begin to walk in the wisdom. Well, that's not something that happens just like that. That's something that you have to devote your life to over and over and over and over and over again. And a big part of all of us coming together and gathering together is simply we have chosen to be disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ. And hear me say this to you. If you are not purposely being discipled by the word of God, you are accidentally being discipled by the world. If you don't put it upon yourself and say, I'm sorry, I'm dedicated, I'm committed to getting the Word of God within my life, to being a part of something that is way beyond me. I, I am a disciple of Jesus, and I'm committed to being discipled. And we have thousands and thousands of people that are watching right this second all over the world. We have people in Australia that are watching right this second. Everybody say, hello, Australia. All right. We have people all over the world that are, that, that are watching. And, and I say this to our community of people that are watching online all over the world. I say this to the people that are here. God Almighty blesses your pursuit. He blesses your faithfulness. And it matters if you sign up for discipleship. It matters. It matters in a tremendous way. Well, I, I, whenever I look at Open Door and look at what can you expect to happen whenever we get together here on Sunday mornings, if you're... Man, you know, wake up. Man, you, you know, ladies, your husband is grumpy and ugly. And you can't even remember why you married that brother anymore. And you start singing in the Holy Ghost trying to get your act together. You got zoo breath. You got to go take care of that. You got to pack on your face and your makeup and get your Dolly Parton hairdo going before you've seen him in public. And your kids have lost their minds. And you're like, what? Whoa, 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 wait. Why am I doing this? What, why am I signing up for this? Listen, we know for a fact that God's not going to love you anymore if you go to church and if you're a part of a tribe than if you don't go to church and if you're not part of a tribe. But I want to just say this, and I, I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. The litmus test is not if God loves you more if you're hooked up to the right church. The litmus test is do you love God more? Are you more committed? Are you more faithful? Are you more inspired? Are you more willing to get out of the things that are comfortable and get into it? Because the Word of God and the power of His testimony and the demonstration of the Holy Spirit got a hold of you because you were there at the right place at the right time for the right move of God to happen. And it's not that God wouldn't have loved you had you not been a part. It was that you would have missed what God had for you had you not been a part. And that's legit. And it's real. You know, I, 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 I think of things like this. If you're brand new in King Jesus and if you don't know what to do, who's in your circle? Who are the people that you do life with? Who are the people that you live life with? And start there. If you're determined to walk with Jesus and none of the people within your circle are walking with Jesus, you need a new circle. But then I'm going to be lonely. Oh, yeah, well, welcome. <laughs> See, we all make it look like it's easy, but it ain't easy. We just decide to make a bigger deal out of heaven than we do out of hell. Come on. Man, I tell you what, I've had trouble. You don't think, listen, you don't think I've had trouble going to church and being a part of a church? This brother right here, man. I remember whenever we were real young, we were super committed to a church, and I just got tired and said, I'm done. I'm not being committed anymore. I told Leanna, I said, I ain't never going. I'm done. I don't want to go to church anymore. She said, Troy, get up and get dressed. Quit it. I'm like, no. I ain't going today, man. I got stuff to do around the house. This is a really big deal for me. And she's like, come on, Troy, get up. Get up. Let's go to church. And I told her, I said, honey, I want to tell you the truth. Those people don't like me. They're ugly. And she's like, Troy, you're the pastor. You have to go to church. (laughs) 
Well, I want to tell you, I want to tell you what our intent, when it comes to the, our heart for the house is leadership, our intent for you every single time that you come here. We, we have something that's called the four open door, and we want this to happen. And the first of the four open door, if you ever come to our one-on-one class or our two-on-one class, you're going to hear about the four open door where we say, I promise you, these are the things that we are intent on happening every single time you come to Open Door Church because these are things that all of us need every time we gather together. What is that? The first one we define as celebration. And Psalms chapter 122, verse 1 says this, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. And I, I want to tell you, you have to decide that this matters and that this is going to be good when you first wake up in the morning. With the same measure that you bring, you guys know the rest of that verse, right? So the measure that you bring is the measure that gets back to you. And your responsibility is to come with expectancy. Where you say, you know what, man, today's the day that anything could change. Today's the day that while I'm worshiping King Jesus, man, everything can change for me. Today is the day that somebody's going to get saved. Today is the day that somebody's going to get healed. You know, I, when, I, when we do this, and we say, well, there's, there, there, there's going to be a couple of things that's going to happen. Number one, while I'm there and while I'm in the anointing and while I'm under the presence of God and while the Word of God is being taught, bing, I'm going to find out something I never knew. And there's going to be a brand new revelation, and it's going to be a game changer. But then there's also going to be something else. In the wisdom that I'm already walking in and the stuff that I've already learned, God's going to give me a brand new layer of wisdom. And if I tweak it just a little bit, it's going to go from, it's going to go from 30-fold to 60-fold and from 60-fold to 100-fold. I recently heard of this guy who had developed these nanotechnology, these nanorobots, where they are, they are literally they're, they're, they're chemical-based and they are like putting them inside of people's bodies to attack cancer cells. And whenever he, whenever he first did it, one of the things that he found was it's not going to work because, because these robots just move too slow. They move way, way, way too slow. And the rotation on something that they call wheels, which is just a simple term for how these, how these nanobots get from one point to another point, the rotation of the turn, the rotation of it, was, was once every 40 something hours and they're tiny so that turn is a big deal he's like well that's not going to work he redid the whole chemical process of the entire thing and he tweaked it a tiny 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 amount and in one moment it went from one turn every 40 something hours to millions of turns a second it went from it doesn't move to not only doesn't move, but we can't even keep up with it now. And it was a tiny, tiny, tiny adjustment that did that. Well, friends, the kingdom of heaven is just like that. And whenever we, whenever we have a respect for the power of God and the presence of God and the teaching of the word of God, there are things that are changed and adjusted a tiny bit that you go from 30-fold, from 60-fold into 100-fold. And so you come expecting that. John chapter 4, verse 23 and verse 24, Jesus himself says, The Father seeks worshipers, and his worshipers must worship him in spirit and in truth. Can I tell you, can I tell you why you need to be excited about coming here and worshiping God with us? Let me tell you, I'm, I'm going to give you some very practical reasons why you should say, Dude, I, I, I got to get up there and I got to worship. Why? Because the Word of God defines points of worship as gates that Jesus walks in. Now, there's a huge study that goes with this, but all parts of a city are symbolic of certain things with, that all of us need. And the gates of the city are always represented as praise and as worship. Now, why is that? Because that's a gate that the king walks in through. Now, look, we know that the walls of the city represent your, your salvation and your security that you are indeed saved. Somebody say amen to that. That the walls are salvation and the gates are praise. But I want to tell you something. There's a lot of people who are walking with Jesus. They got a wall, but they don't have a gate. And I just recently heard some, some, um, the team out of Bethel preaching on this. And I was like, amen, 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 amen to that. That there's a whole lot of wall, but there ain't a whole lot of gate. And Jesus never shows up. Amen. You want Jesus to show up? You find, listen, if, if you're a king, you don't just go through any gate. The king has his own gates. Now, I'm going to be with, the, with a, 
I'm going to be in Israel in the month of March next year. And if you come and go with me on my trip to Israel, one of the things that you will discover is I will take you to the Eastern Gate or the Golden Gate of Jerusalem and say, that's the gate that the king walks through. That's the gate that Jesus Christ himself, once he, once he puts his foot on the Mount of Olives, the world is split from there on, there's a brand new prime meridian that no longer begins in London, England, right? Greenwich Mean Time, but now begins in Jerusalem, Israel, and everything begins and ends, all time and all distance begins and ends at the throne of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he's going to step right through that gate, and he's going to enter a throne right there on that mountain. Amen. Amen. He's going to do that. I've learned, I've learned that when, when, when the king or the queen when they step into their majesty, they don't just enter the room in the same way that everybody else enters the room. They enter it through special doors and special gates. Well, the God, friends, the kingdom of heaven is just like that. When you get together, whenever you worship, there is a gate that is open between you and heaven that Jesus can step in. They're the gates of heaven are open through praise and through worship. I don't know if y'all are believing me or not. Because that's really good news. That makes me want to worship every time we worship here. Because you know what? Jesus is liable to start, Jesus is liable to walk into the room of my finances just like that. Jesus is liable to walk in the room of my thinking just like that. Jesus is liable to walk into the room of whatever just like that. When does that happen? It happens during praise and worship. That's when it happens. It's not just what you do so that people know that you're a Christian. That's not what you do. It's, man, praise and worship is where the gates of heaven are open. Um, I've had the great privilege of going to Uganda for 25 years. Leanne and I have been going to Uganda. We do incredible work. We work with amazing teams in Uganda. And I've actually had the privilege of meeting um, several kings. And the king of Uganda is the big Mamba Jamba. He's one of the, he, he, he's the biggest uh, tribe. And uh, actually the name Uganda is named after Buganda, right? And he's, you know, he's a king. Now, we, went to, we had a chance to actually go see the king. And when you get ready to go see the king, one of the things I can tell you is this. He doesn't come in the same door that everybody else comes in. There's the king's door. And nobody goes to that door except for the king. Nobody does. I'm like, okay. And you learn that through the guy with the machine gun because he tells you that. <laughs> I'm not teasing. Man, and they're not playing. They don't think anything is funny when the king is showing up. Like, you're not playing around, man. The king, the king is going to show up. So... We all gather together, and one of the things also, too, is this. You do not wear whatever it is that you want to in the presence of the king. You wear what is proper to the proper protocol of the king that you're actually meeting. Well, proper protocol for King Jesus is being clothed in holiness, being clothed in righteousness, being clothed in praise and worship. It's proper protocol, right? So you're getting dressed for the occasion. Now, when I was meeting the king of Uganda, they made me dress the traditional African dress, which is a one-piece kind of a dress thing. And then, since, since we were meeting him in the parliament building, I had to wear the proper protocol for the, for the, for the parliament building, which is a British-style jacket on top of the African dress. This is what I look like. Dude. That's what a man in a dress is supposed to look like right there. I rock your face off when I wear a dress. <laughs> you know, would I have rather, you know, gone in my jeans and boots? You dang skippy. But it ain't about me. It's about the presence of the king. Right on? I mean, I don't wear a dress but once or twice a month, and that's a big deal for me. <laughs> but that's none of your business anyway. So I went, I went to go see the king. And you don't dress how you want to dress. You dress what works for the king because he's going, to show in the, he's going to show up in the room, and it's a big deal. So it is with praise and worship. The second thing of the forward open door is inspiration. By the way, can I, before I get into inspiration, doesn't that make you want to just worship Jesus right now, that you know that a gate is opened? That you know that? I mean, you've heard about the gates of heaven, right? There's 12 gates of the gates of heaven, and they're all made out of a single pearl. What is a pearl? It's something that's made through a horrible agitation. Dirt gets in where it shouldn't. And how that oyster deals with it makes something so viable. See, that's why it's important for you to praise and worship through all the hell that you're going through. Because it creates a pearly gate. Some dirt got in your life that shouldn't have got in there. Man, it hurt. And how you deal with that 
produces a pearl, which is a gate of heaven. Amen. The Bible says that the gates of heaven are open 24 hours a day, seven days a week. What does that mean? It means praise and worship is happening 24 days, and it means the king can come in and out however he wants to because that worship is there. Can we all just say, King Jesus, Jesus. we worship you. you. Man, it opens doors, opens the gates, it builds a throne. The second one is inspiration. When it comes to ins- whenever it comes to inspiration, we're talking about the how- we're talking about the power of the Holy Ghost. And and friends, listen, we are a Holy Spirit church, and we one of the sixteen core values of Open Door Church is this: we live in the constant awareness that nothing is impossible. Because in the midst of all of our planning, in the midst of all of our preparation, in the midst of in the midst of our strategies and plans. In the midst of our core values, in the midst of how we're going after things, what's real is Jesus can show up at any given moment and change anything. Yes, we're going to work hard. Yes, we're going to go after things. Yes, 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 we're going to sacrifice. Yes, we're going to sweat. Yes, we're going to cry. We're going to be involved in people's lives. Yes, we're going to do all those things. But sometimes the very best prayer you can possibly pray is, Jesus, I need you to show up and just change everything. Just to ask the Holy Spirit to show up and to just change anything. We have a prayer tent. And last Wednesday, friends, we had people that was in the prayer tent. And while they were there, we had this incredible thing. I want you guys to show that video for me. We, we, had, we had, listen, we had people healed of cancer last week. That they went in there. And here at Open Door, every single praise and worship service, we have... Our prayer tent is open, and the elders of the church are inside there. This, this good-looking man right here in this cowboy hat, he came in here sometime back with bone cancer and left there healed, and the brother is healed. He is free of bone cancer. His, his name is A.D., not B.C., but A.D. That's his name. I'm not, I'm not making that up. It's like proof that Jesus has showed up, A.D., I was like, what a prophetic name you have, A.D., wow. But I mean, you know what? I mean, he come in here with bone cancer, and the spirit of the living God completely healed him. Come on, listen, anything can happen. The same power that rose Jesus from the dead is in you. So the first thing that you can expect whenever, whenever you show up here at Open Doors, number this, is, is, is number one, this. We are going to be full. We are going to have celebration in here. Now, you're going to catch me in a bad mood, but you ain't never going to know it. Because I ain't going to let you. I got one shot to reach your family. I can be in a bad mood for the rest of the day if I want to. Come on. I'm going to celebrate Jesus. And guys, when it comes to the environment, when it comes to the atmosphere, and when it comes to the cultures that all of us live in, it is determined by what we make a big deal out of. Values determine culture. If you, if you, just like your environment at the house, if your house looks more like hell than it looks like heaven, it's because you have no value for order or you have no value for whatever. Like, dude, if you mow your front, your very front lawn and you find a 1957 Chevy that you didn't know was there, <laughs> your neighbors are not happy you live there. <laughs> I'm telling you. They're not happy you're there at all. But if you're somebody that says, you know what, I got enough chaos in my life, there ain't going to be chaos at my house. I'm just not. Now, I'm a weirdo. I am a slob that is a clean freak. Am I the only one in here that's like that? Because I want to tell you something, I can make a mess so fast. Listen, I love to cook. Leanna, don't let me cook. You know why? Because of how the kitchen looks after I cook. She's like, look, I, I have to get a hazmat suit to clean up after you make two eggs. Because I'm just like, you know, the cat in a hat when I'm in the kitchen, man. I'm just getting after it. <laughs> but you know what, man? If, 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 if it comes to your environment, when it comes to the atmosphere of your heart and your mind, when it comes to your culture, which is how we deal with each other, it's all determined by how you set the tone of what you make a big deal out of. And if you don't do that, the meanest and most disruptive people around you will be happy to do that for you. My God, that's a good word. So the inspiration is the second one, signs, miracles, and wonders. Prophetic, manifest presence, the power of the Holy Spirit. We live in a constant awareness that anything or 
I should just say this, that nothing is impossible. Everybody say this. I live in a constant awareness that nothing is impossible. Wake up saying that. Wake up and say, today's the day. <laughs> and just wake up saying those things and go, man, I'm not going to be defeated another day of my life. The spirit of the living God is here. Somebody say amen to that. Amen. So the first four of the Ford Open Door is celebration, the atmosphere, the environment, the culture of our house. We will make a big deal out of the right things. And you know how I know that? Because that's my job. I think nobody else's job. That's my job, and I don't, I don't allow anybody else to determine that. My, my main responsibility as a senior pastor of Open Door Church is to be the chief architect of the environment, the atmosphere, and the culture of our house. And I'm not going to leave that up to somebody else. You know, some old mean, toxic person come in here wanting to run everything and ruin everything like they have every other church they've been a part of. I know the scripture that says extend the right hand of fellowship. Sometimes we need to give the left foot of fellowship too. Just <laughs> say, listen, man, go find a mean church, man. There's one on every corner. They will celebrate you. They're praying for more mean, nasty people just like you to show up. They really are. Here's the next one. The next one. <laughs> Can I tell you, what makes something funny it's when somebody says it's funny and the person that says it really thinks it's funny. I thought that was funny. That's what I thought. <laughs> okay, here's the next one. The next one is preparation. And when it comes to preparation, what I mean by this is our, if we are going to have a come and see model, it cannot be a spontaneous model. And for people who are like, well, be sure and bring your family and we'll We'll just move when the Spirit starts to move, and we'll start when we want to start, and we'll finish when we want to finish. They don't give a rip about your family. They are not interested in serving your family whatsoever. They don't like your family. Man, they're, they're, I've seen your family, and their lives are full of sin. <laughs> oh, I tell you, man, you got you to gotta serve somebody if somebody wants to sing. You got to serve somebody is what you got to do. And you got to say, hey, we're going to get our act together. And we're going to do this thing. We're going to do it right. We're going to do it to the best of our ability. We're going to do it with excellence. And we're going to do it with consistency. And the message that we give is going to be consistent. There are all kinds of stuff that I could preach on that I don't preach on because it's just not consistent with the message that God has trusted us with. Oh, Pastor Troy, we all have the same calling. No, we don't. And we do not all have the same assignment. And the reason why there's so much division in the body of Christ is because they believe that their assignment is the only assignment. They believe that, and they're just whack right on. Friends, we need to celebrate the diversity that is among us, not only, not only within the house, but outside the house. Why would I care if somebody is a Baptist or a Methodist or a Pentecostal or a non-Pentecostal? Why is that any of my business? Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, I'm going to celebrate that. Amen. Now, now, while I don't get to determine how they walk with God, th nobody else gets to determine how I walk with God either. And uh, I'm going to be as crazy as I can possibly be. I'm going to be as madly in love with King Jesus. I'm going to go after it. Hallelujah. Look, I love the spontaneous. I do. I really and truly do. But you don't just serve people spontaneously. You have to have a wisdom in how you serve people. People who have no clue on serving people have no value for the wisdom of serving people. All they have a value for is spontaneous. That's it. But if you're going to serve people, man, you got to be smart in, in actually how you do that. So here's what I'm telling you. Every time you come to this church, the Spirit of God, you know what? We're bound to determine that there's celebration, that there's worship, that we're going to be in a good mood, that we're going to show people there's a different life you can live. That's celebration. The second one is inspiration. This is a Holy Spirit church. Signs, miracles, and wonders get to happen here. The stories and the testimonies that we give are all going to be about the power of God because, because we choose not to live a powerless life. Somebody say amen to that. The third one is preparation, which means even though we don't take ourselves very daggum serious, we take you very serious, and we take the people that you're going to bring here extremely serious, and this is our chance to get them for King Jesus, so we will do the best that we can do to have our act together. Somebody say amen. And then the fourth of the four at Open Door is salvation. You know, I, there a lot of churches will either only preach the gospel of salvation, but they will not preach the gospel of the kingdom. 
And other churches will only preach the gospel of the kingdom, but, but they will not preach the gospel of salvation. We can't be like that. We have to be, we have to be willing to do both. The gospel of the kingdom, and that's what Jesus said. Hey, this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached. What's he talking about? The gospel of the kingdom is that Jesus Christ has showed up and everything can change. Amen. He's not just talking about salvation. But the gospel of salvation is the simple gospel and the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ, which most of us as Christians don't even really know what that is. Well, there are strategies, there are core values. It's not our strategies, it's not our core values, it's not any of those things. It is, it is simply this, right on, that God Almighty bridged the gap between God and man, and God became man. And he was born, and his name is Jesus. And Jesus lived the life that we could not live. He died the death that we could not die. He resurrected from the dead on the third day, and now he offers his resurrection life, his redemption, his power to everyone who will repent and receive him. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. So we have to be able to do both. We don't want to just see signs and miracles and wonders and make people more comfortable on their way to hell. <laughs> Amen? We also do not want to, t- to, to see people saved and live in hell and under the dominion of hell for the rest of their lives. That's the gospel of the kingdom. So we want to do both of those things. So here's the forward open door. Celebration. Everybody say Celebration. Inspiration, Inspiration. Preparation, preparation, and salvation. salvation. What we're looking for is for everybody to get saved, restored, and redeemed. Let's give the Lord a great big praise in the house.